Dad, can I drive? Maybe next time. We gotta get to that game. Hold on, hold on, do over. I wasn't ready. You ready now? Ready. Ever gonna let me win one? Nope. Yeah. My name is Jack Baldwin. I'm a coal miner. I started in the coal mines in 1971, so I've been in 33 years underground, and I've run a continuous miner operator for 25 years, and then ever since the remote control miners came out, you know, I've been on the remote with the remote box. Yeah, I think the remote control box is a lot safer than the deck operated. Of course, you know, we've had quite a few people killed with the remote control. That, uh, you know, you have to be alert, be aware of what you're doing, stay out of the pinch points. And, uh, you know, I thank God that he's kept me and blessed me all these years that I've run the miner. You know, I give him the most credit, but he gave me the wisdom and knowledge to kind of stay out and to do the job to the best of the ability that he gives me to do it. From 1990 to 2004, 24 underground fatalities have occurred while personnel were operating remote control miners. 16 of the 24 fatalities occurred as operators were tramming the machine. 11 of the 24 fatalities have occurred between the years 2000 and 2004. Five of these fatalities were in Virginia. We must all make sure that everyone stays out of the red zones when the machine is energized. Make sure to always comply with the roof control plan. Always test the emergency stop to make sure it is operating properly at all times.
You're gonna do fine tonight. I got faith in you. Thanks, Dad. Bye, hon. You better try that again. Now that's more like it. I'm gonna let you drive home from school. Love you. I love you too. You be careful. See you this evening. Morning, buddy. How you doing this morning? Fine. Let's go make one. We'll do it. My accident had happened. Could have took my legs off or killed me either one. So uh, the miner can get away from you. I was moving across the section one day, hooking up my ropes, and hit the tram when I was uh, going across the section, and hit out my legs between the rib and the standoff. Just so happened it stopped before it mashed me. I got by with it, and the next person may not. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Wiz. You still got them boots on sale? Yeah, sure do. Size 10, right? Size 10. All righty. Hey, I'll send Lisa down tomorrow to pick them up. OK, I'll hold you a pair. OK, thanks a lot. No problem. Take it easy. See ya. They got them cross cuts too last night? They might have. You know, we got that safety talk this morning. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. You know, I'm getting about sick and tired of them coming down here trying to tell me how to do my job. I've been doing this for 21 years. 21 years, Rog. You'd think by now somebody would ask me for my advice. Well, bub, you know they're just trying to help. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I know what they're trying to do. Them Glen Sizemore, I'm the coal miner. I've been working in the mine for about 34 years, and uh, the last 32 of it, uh, I've never had a lost time accident. And, uh, you know, by, we've had, everybody's, I guess, you know, has had close calls and, and little things that other people might have, you know, uh, cause you to get hurt, but I've been real fortunate about that. And like I said, I've been 32 years without a lost time, never missed a shift, and a lot of it, I guess, is just being aware of where, where, you, where you're at, your surroundings. And a lot of times you've got to watch the other man, because the other man's the one's going to hurt you, and you ain't going to hurt yourself. So just be careful, do your best. That's, you know, and you make it back home.
Come on in here, guys. We're going to have a safety talk. Got a special speaker. Fellas, I'm uh, Carol Green, Mine Inspector Supervisor with the Virginia Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy. We're going to have a special safety talk on remote control miner safety. Hey, Wiz, he's talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about you, Wiz. <laughs> uh. Fellas, I'm going to, we'll look at these, these charts. Uh, we're putting a lot of emphasis on remote control miner safety with a, with a recent increase in the number of uh, miners that we've had that's been killed and being involved in serious accidents and, and near misses as well. I'll give you a few, just a few stats and then we'll look at these charts and, and uh, try to analyze, hopefully, and learn from the mistakes that others have made. <clears throat> from 1990 to the present, 24 underground fatalities have occurred while personnel were operating remote control miners. And if you look at this chart, you can see that, that the majority of them occurred on this right side of the machine several down in here around the, the end of the boom, several in this location where usually the cable enters the miner, and then up here near the ripper head. 16 of these 24 fatalities occurred as operators were tramming the machine. 11 of the, the 24 fatalities have occurred from the year 2000 to today. So you can see the, the sudden increase that we've had just in the last four years. Five of these fatalities have occurred in Virginia. Four of them occurred down here like I said, at the cable entrance area of the continuous miner, and we have one occurred up here right behind the ripper head. We must make sure that everyone stays out of the red zones when the machine is energized. And we've got a red zone chart here most all of you are familiar with. You can see the different examples we show, the different cuts that we take. Uh, we've got a high risk uh, area when, when people are tramming the machine. We must make sure that we always comply with the roof control plan as far as where people are positioning themselves when the miner is energized. We must always test emergency stop to make sure he's operating properly at all times because you never know when we may need to cut that miner off in, if we do have an emergency. Now, fellas, we know several of you guys have operated a continuous miner for a long time. And I know that you, that you guys feel safe and comfortable where you position yourself when operating and tramming the miner. And I'm sure most of these guys on this fatality chart also felt they were in a safe location as well. When you look at, like I said, the, the, the fatalities that have occurred across the nation, uh, they probably felt safe as well. This fatality information proves that being alongside the miner when tramming or repositioning the miner puts you out in the red zone. You can see the different, the different cut sequences that we've got here. Uh, where people are to position themselves to stay out of that red zone. Whether you're a minor operator, a minor helper, or whatever role you're playing, whatever work you're performing when you're near that miner when, when it's energized. History has shown that remote control miner operators feel safe when positioned at the middle point of the miner when training or repositioning the machine. Now by that I mean most people think they're comfortable up in this area because they, they look at that as not being one of what we call the pivot points of the miner. These fatalities, serious accidents, and many near misses prove that this myth is, is absolutely false. What you have to realize is that when you start moving the machine, the relationship of your position in reference to the miner has also changed. If you look at a continuous miner and if you were up here near it, what a lot of people don't realize is when they start moving that machine in either direction, the relationship of that miner in relation to where they're located has changed and what that ends up doing is putting them in a red zone. History also proves that being located at the middle of the machine is not a safe location because fatalities and serious accidents have occurred when the machine slid against the rib, pinning the miner operator and other miners as well. This information clearly proves the myth of feeling safe while located at the middle of the machine is absolutely false. Fellas, anybody got any questions or comments on the things that we have discussed? I'll just leave you with this. Uh, when you look at these charts, the, the red zone chart showing where we should position ourselves and, and where other people uh, aren't allowed to be. And when you look at the, the different fatalities that have occurred not only in Virginia but across the nation, it's important. And we certainly pray that, that everyone realizes uh, the ultimate price that people have paid when unfortunately they put themselves in an unsafe location.
I thank you guys and thank you for your attention and, and uh, just work safe. Hey, Wes, what's your problem? You know, I've heard that stuff a hundred times. It just burns me up, people wanting to tell me how to do my job. I've been doing this for 21 years. I've not been hurt yet. Yes, but you're the best man around we got here. We want to keep you here another 21 years. Your family needs you, and we want you to work safe. Yeah, I hear you. Let's just work safe. Uh, we, we want to keep you around here. All right, I know. My name's Emory R. Rasnick, coal miner. I've been running the continuous miner roughly 27 years. Going on 30 years total mining experience. On May 24th, 2003, I had an accident. I was pinned between the miner and the rib. And uh, basically what I did was I got to cut a coal. I backed the miner up to kick the ripper breaker, put the cable on the head, walked up the side of it. The box swung in toward the panel board. My light cord activated one of the tram levers, slewing the miner, pinching me. And uh, by the time the foreman got some more guys over there, the miner had luckily stopped. Uh, they had to dig the rib out with a slate bar, cut my belt off, lift me up beside the miner, between the miner and the rib, straight up, get me to the man bus and get me outside. I sustained a separated pelvis, which ended up being separated about five to six inches by the time they did surgery. Fractured hip, small bone in my back was broke. I missed 10 and a half months of work. I'm back now, but basically I have pain every day, so I wouldn't want to see this happen to anyone else. Anyone watching this video needs to take extra precaution around these continuous miners. Whether it be remote or you'd be sitting in a deck, the same thing can happen either way. If uh, you're moving out of the place after you get the cut, you need to make sure that you unhook the box when you walk up beside that miner, if you're by yourself, before you kick any breakers or put the cable on or whatever. If you have a helper and he's going to do it, you make sure that miner is cut off and you're unhooked before he walks beside the miner because anyone in the area of that miner can get pinched and they may end up like some of our other fatalities and we don't want to see anyone get hurt. The continuous miner remote control unit must be de-energized before a miner helper or any other person travels into the red zone pinch point areas to handle the cable. Operating remote control miners in low coal seams present special hazards in that visibility and personal mobility are greatly decreased.
The continuous minor remote control unit must be de-energized before any person travels into the red zone pinch point areas to perform any work, including but not limited to making gas tests, maintaining ventilation, okay, testing right. roof and ribs, or handling the cable. The continuous minor operator cannot get distracted while tramming the machine and allow the movement of the machine to place anyone in a red zone pinch point area. Most remote control minor operators are forward direction oriented. A common misunderstanding that some machine operators have is that if they are located at the front of the miner facing the ripper head as compared to facing the rear of the machine, then they think that the tram levers should be actuated in the opposite direction, even though they want to move the machine in the same direction. Well, it's like you say, if you're tramming it from behind it, you're tramming it up to there and you want it to go toward the right rib, you would hit the left tram lever and sometimes you might have to hit the right one backwards a little bit, but depending on what type of miner it is, most of them will just slew itself with the one lever. But if you move around to the front, you're still going to move the levers the same way, but in your mindset you're thinking you're backwards but you're not. You still move the levers the same way. What remote controlled minor operators must understand is that the actuation of the tram levers is the same regardless of whether the operator is standing at the rear or is standing in the front facing the machine. Minor operators must understand and realize that splitting the tram levers with the speed function in turbo provides very little reaction time in the case of an emergency. It's too fast. You, you really don't have as much control over that miner when it's in turbo tram as you do when it's in lower tram. Objects in the roadway and adverse bottom conditions including muddy, uneven, and sloping areas create the potential of making the machine move even faster. And if somebody's in the area and you split those cats in turbo tram, you could have him pinned before you could do anything. The miner is very fast in turbo tram. As an operator, it's our responsibility to make sure no one else is in the area. If they are, we should just cut the machine off. Okay, right. And you got to watch yourself if you're going to do that in turbo tram because it could have you before you can get out of the way too. The remote control minor operator must stay clear of the red zone pinch point areas while turning cross cuts. The minor operator must also ensure that the remote control unit is de-energized prior to anyone entering the red zone pinch point areas to check the location of crosscut centers and to keep the machine properly aligned in the cut. Roger, help! I'm pinned! 
buddy. You bail out. We'll get you out of here. Help! Get out! Where's this band? Get out! Hang on, buddy. Hang on. You bail out. I'm William Blackburn. William Anthony Blackburn. I'm a coal miner. I run a miner. And I've been a coal miner for 20 years. And I... I've done a little bit of everything on the ground. I've county worked, I've done it all, and I've seen a lot of hazards in the mines, and, and I've seen a lot of bad things too. The day of the accident, we was we just had started pillaring, and me and Greg, a friend of mine, we run miners together. He run one, and I run the other, and. Uh, it was up to the last cut before I had to go to my miner. And me and one of my shuttle car men was hanging his curtain as he trammed the miner to the last cut. And he was telling me we was joking, going on, have a good time that day. He said, well, now it's your turn to run the miner. As my, me and my helper, my shuttle, or shuttle car man, was helping me hang the curtain, certain sounds, if you run a piece of equipment, every day and every day, and if you know something's wrong, that will catch your attention. And something caught my attention and told me it wasn't right. So when I turned around to see what was going on, I noticed my friend standing there. And I thought, you know, everything was all right. And and they just, the miner kept spinning. And I finally I looked up into his face. and. You know, what did I say? Something that really affects me every day that I have to live with for the rest of my life. I lost a good friend, a true brother to me, and it did something that his family, how it affect me, and I like for all the coal miners that works, please stay on the red zone. Don't go through what I had to, because your family, our family, and their family it's not worth it. It's not. And I really go to all coal miners to stay out of the red zone. Because one minute you're there, one minute you're gone. My friend, I lost a true friend, but two minutes. I had my back turned for two minutes. And what caught my attention was something that you do, something that ain't right, you know it's not right. And these days that I still work underground, I hear that certain sound of something that went on that day. It really, I don't want to look around to see one of my other coworkers, and one of my friends, there on the ground or damaged. And this will affect you as bad as it has me. And I would just wish to all coal miners, listen to what I have to say. Don't go through what I have, what I went through, and what I've seen. Because your family deserves more than that. And you don't want to see your, one of your best friends sit there and die right there in front of you in your arms. You know, you don't. That's why I always want to say, please stay out of the pinch points of the miners. It's, it's sad. If you put yourself in the wrong positions, that machine gets a hold of you, there's no do-overs. Hold on, hold on, do-over. I wasn't ready. There you go, now. There's no try again. Bye, hon. You better try that again. They are no next times. Hey, Dad, can I drive? Maybe next time. We gotta get to the game. If you're not careful, you'll end up dead. Hang on, buddy. Hang on, you'll be all right and that'll affect everybody. Your friends. Your community.
Tootsie. Your co-workers. And of course, your family. And when you're gone, they're the ones that suffer most. miss my friend. It's been almost a year now. And I miss the good times we had fishing, hunting. And I just like to say, just take care of yourself and God will be with us. You know, I've been doing this 21 years, and I've been doing it my way. And I've been thinking, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe I should try it your way. We're glad to have you on board. The company's proud of you. Okay. <laughs> 